Guess what? I did it. I passed the CISM or the Certified Information Security Manager certification from ISACA. Want to know how I not only passed the exam on my first attempt, but how I did it so fast? Well, stick around because in this video, that's exactly what we're going to discuss. If we just met or you're new to my content, you might not know much about me or my background. I'm not going to go detail by detail about myself because I already have a bunch of videos where I do that and you can check them out. You can also check in my LinkedIn, but there are a few things that I think you need to know about. First, I'm not new to cybersecurity or taking certification exams. I hold lots of different certifications like the Network Plus, the Security Plus, the GCIH, the GSEC, the GWAPT, the CISA, and the highly sought after CISSP or the CISP. I've also previously held two CCNAs and a CSENT from Cisco, but I let them expire because they weren't giving me enough value. That's a discussion for another time though. So as you can see, I've completed quite a few certifications. Experience wise, I've been in the industry for over a decade. That means over 10 years. And I've worked in the defense industry, consulting, and at a software service provider. The main reason that I'm saying this information is for overall context of what I was bringing to the table starting my journey. We'll talk about more why this matters later. Okay, so now you have some background on me, let's talk about what drove my decision to get the SISM. One of the first things that impacted my decision to pursue the SISM is my ultimate goal to become a CISO or a Chief Information Security Officer. Basically, that's the highest level cybersecurity or information security position that you can get in an organization. Unfortunately, a lot of the certifications that we have in cybersecurity don't do a good job of preparing you to deal with business issues or business decision makers. Prior to working in cybersecurity, I did work in business and sales related positions, and I have an undergraduate degree in business, so that world really isn't new to me, but there's a lot of important pieces that you need when it comes to cybersecurity that are specific to the industry. The system really focuses on the business aspects of security and how you can be an enabler within a business while you're still reducing risk. One of the questions that I get asked a lot is what's the difference between the CISSP and the CISM? Honestly, it's a great question because the differences get dismissed more than they should. Now, if you haven't seen my videos on the CISSP, then I highly recommend that you go watch them, especially the video where I talk about how I pass in two weeks and the video where I compare the CISSP and the CISM. Basically, the CISSP focuses a lot on leadership or management decisions, kind of like a first level manager would deal with, so the day-to-day -day aspects of things. The CISSP type of role is the role where you aren't dealing a lot with the business, but you need to make sound decisions based on incomplete or partial information to protect the business. If you've never looked at the CISSP domains, it covers a ton of information within those domains, so you have to have very broad knowledge. The CISM exam domains are very focused in comparison to the CISSP, but they're really focused on running the overall security program, not those first level manager decisions. Essentially, this is like the next level of certification because the role that the certification is intended for is much more likely to deal with business leaders on a regular basis. The CISM is really about governance or oversight, so you aren't going to need some of the more operational information that you would for the CISSP. People also always ask me, should they get the CISSP or the CISM? That's another great question. Frankly, I think you could be successful if you just had the CISSP and not the CISM, but I don't think it would work as well the other way around. So if you just had the CISM and not the CISSP. Why is that? Well, if you have the CISSP, then you can talk to the cybersecurity or the information security staff members in terms that they're gonna understand. The CISM information is valuable, but it's certainly information that you can pick up over many years of experience. Don't get me wrong, that's gonna be a difficult route, but you can do it. On the other hand, somebody who's leading a security program but they can't speak the language of their staff, that's gonna be a really difficult situation and you're gonna have trouble interacting with your staff. Let's go ahead and take a look at the CISM website. Okay, so this is the website for the CISM. Again, it's from ISACA, but if we go ahead and scroll down here, we'll see a little bit more about the certification. So the different domains, information security governance, information security risk management, information security program, incident management. This is very much an oversight kind of certification. If we go ahead and click on the view exam candidate guide, so ISACA makes these candidate guides to give you a little bit more information about the actual certification. So we'll click on the English version and we'll go ahead and scroll down here. So we're not gonna go in depth for this candidate guide, but definitely go get it if you're looking to get one of these certifications, not just the CISM, any ISACA certification. But they give you this chart here, so it talks a little bit more about the requirements of the certification. Right here in the middle of the chart, this is going to be for the CISM. So we'll look a little bit more at this. 
description designed for those who manage, design, oversee, and assess an enterprise's information security function. Again, oversight, looking at the entire program and leading that program, not just dealing with a particular small aspect. If we look at the experience requirements, there is an experience requirement for the CISM, so keep that in mind. There is a five-year experience requirement in information security management and experience waivers for up to two years of experience. If we keep scrolling down here, we'll see the different weights of the domains. So domain one, information security governance, 17%. Domain two, information security risk management, 20%. Domain three, information security program, 33%. And then domain four, incident management, 30%. So you can see the majority of your questions are gonna come from domain three and four. And then domain two will be set, uh, third. And then domain one will be the least amount of questions. So if you're going for the certification, keep that in mind as you're preparing where you should spend the bulk of your time and effort. If you're enjoying the content so far, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And let's take a second to talk about Cyber Training Pro. Are you tired of overpaying for cybersecurity training? Are you interested in training from industry professionals? Are you looking for cybersecurity career services? If you answered yes to any of those questions, then CyberTrainingPro.com is the perfect platform for you. At Cyber Training Pro, we're a one-stop shop for all your cybersecurity needs. We can train you for industry certifications or just improve your overall knowledge and skills in a certain area. Unlike other platforms, we don't stop there. We can also coach you throughout your career, practice your interview skills, or create a high-performing resume with our career services. CyberTrainingPro.com isn't just another training platform. Students get exclusive access to our private community where we go beyond training courses to provide additional content, tips and tricks, and engagement with both other students and staff. Look, by the year 2025, there could be as many as 3.5 million job openings in cybersecurity. With so much opportunity, why not maximize your career potential with a platform that cares about your success? Come join us at cybertrainingpro.com and start building your future today. And then as far as the exam, the exam does give you up to four hours to take it and finish your exam. So 240 minutes, you get 150 multiple choice questions. One of the things that's a little bit different on this certification exam compared to like the CISSP now, which does a adaptive version, adaptive testing, is this just gives you 150 questions. Now there are some research questions on there that don't count towards your score, but you're still gonna get 150 questions. You're still gonna have to complete 150 questions. You're not gonna get only like 100 questions or 125 questions because you're doing very well. So keep that in mind. These kind of exams from ISACA are brutal, right? Like they're, they're not, the easiest to stay focused for four hours straight, or I guess up to four hours, right? But 150 questions. So keep that in mind. Okay, let's talk about study materials now. If you've never taken an ISACA certification exam before, the number one resource that you can get is the official practice question database. Now this comes from ISACA. The difficulty of the questions is very similar to the actual exam. And honestly, this is the number one resource if you're not gonna get anything else. They will give you the answer, they'll tell you why the answer is correct, why the other answers are not correct, and that can help you in studying. I also recommend getting the official book so you can actually read through it and get all the information. Honestly, I read about a quarter of the book and then I relied heavily on the practice question database. One of the things that I really liked about the practice question database is you can set your exam date and then it will prepare you leading up to that point. So it will tell you, well, you need to get 100 points. And basically that just translates into how many questions or the types of practice question exams that you need to take. But it will lead you to that exam date and prepare you up to that point. It's really, really nice. You also get scored on how well you do versus other students that have taken the questions. So it will give you an actual rating. And there's a rating that's called proficient, where basically that means you're right around the passing score. But if you can get into the advanced or the expert categories, you're gonna easily pass the exam. By the time that I was taking the exam, I had taken every question once and I was scoring well into the advanced category and I passed easily. Surprisingly, I didn't take any video course for the CISM and because I was doing so well on the practice questions, I really didn't feel like it was necessary. 
All right, so when it comes to taking the exam, I scheduled the exam for July 4th in the afternoon and I was taking it online. It's just like a lot of the other online exams that you can take for other certifications. You just go on there, you select your date, you select your time, and then you pay the exam fee and then you're registered. Of course, you can also take it in person, but I chose to take it online. Basically, when you're taking these exams online, you do the same things for all the different certification vendors. You have to take it in a room where there's no distractions. You can't have your phone right next to you. You can't have study sheets or books out or anything like that. And you have to take your webcam and you actually have to show the proctor around the room just to make sure that they can't see anything like that that's going to distract you or allow you to cheat. You also can't cover your mouth, so you can't do that. You can't eat or drink either. One thing that I would say too is make sure to test your computer before you actually take your exam. When I was scheduling my exam, I did the test. So there's a compatibility test where it goes through and makes sure your computer will work. I did that when I scheduled the exam and then I did it the day before. Also, don't install things like patches or anything like that until after you've taken your exam just so there's no issues. Once you finish your exam, you're gonna know right away if you passed or failed, but you're not gonna know your score. For me, it took about 10 calendar days to actually get an email from my SACA with my full score. As I said, I was in the advanced category for all the practice questions on the online database, and I passed easily. All right, so I kinda of mentioned this earlier. If you aren't aware, the SISM does have an experience requirement, just like the CISSP. Now, traditionally, the SISM has required at least five years of experience in three of the four domains and at least three years of information security management experience. ISACA would allow you to waive two years of the primary experience requirement, but you couldn't substitute for the three years of management experience. As I was working through the application forms to get approved and certified, I noticed that the application form still mentioned the management experience, but the actual website doesn't mention it. I'm thinking that ISAC is going away from acquiring this distinction, probably because it was just confusing and you didn't technically even have to be a manager to qualify. People were getting it with just experience in the industry. Anyways, whatever, you still have to complete the application form, you still need the experience, and then you have to pay the $50 application fee just to submit it. I submitted my application on a Saturday and literally about 30 minutes later, I had an email from ISAC saying that my application was approved and it could take up to 10 days to process. It took about 24 calendar days from the day that I passed the exam to be awarded the actual SISM certification in my online portal and to get the digital badge from Credly. Question of the day, which certification are you pursuing right now or are you gonna pursue next? Let me know down in the comment section below. Honestly, I'm extremely happy that I pursued the SISM certification. Like I say, with any certification or training, you should take the things that support your career objectives. Those objectives might change over time, but why waste time on things that won't help you? I hope the information in this video helps you if you're thinking about going after the SISM from ISACA, and I'd love to hear about your experience. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out the description for more resources related to this video, and I'll see you next time.